With spirituality becoming such a widespread topic these days, I feel like it's my responsibility to warn you about the toxic ways that spirituality can show up around you. Hola my beautiful lotus flowers, welcome back or welcome to my channel. If you're into nerding out on everything astrology, spirituality, and self-transformation, this is a community for you. Today we're talking about toxic spirituality and the different ways it might show up. We're going to start the video by talking about five different types of toxic spirituality and examples of how they might show up around you so you know what to look for. Then we're going to close the video by giving some examples of healthy spirituality and healthy ways that spirituality is being expressed. Whether you see it on social media, through your friendships, your family, your romantic partnerships, etc. Let's not waste any more time and hop right into it. All right, let's go over five different types of toxic spirituality and how it might show up in the world around you. Number one is toxic positivity, which is the belief that in order to be truly spiritual, you must maintain a constant state of happiness, peace, and optimism. Although maintaining a positive state is something that is highly beneficial, especially to your spiritual journey, and it can have a lot of positive effects, it is just not humanly possible to always be in a positive state, and that is okay. What we need to realize is that we are not robots who can be put on one setting and stay on that setting 24 seven. We are complex human beings. We are complex humans with complex souls that need to be nurtured and cared for in different ways. And if you think that you should be in a positive state all the time or else you're not spiritual, then this is unrealistic and very harmful to your soul in so many ways. By thinking that we are expected to be in a positive state of mind all the time, to be spiritual, we are only ignoring and suppressing the emotions and the experiences that we go through as humans and causing further long-term mental and emotional damage because of it. For example, say that you are talking to a friend about something you're going through. Say you're just feeling sad for no reason. We don't even have to be going through something specific. Something doesn't have to have happened. Sometimes you just feel sad for no reason. Trust me, I know how that feels. It happens to me all the time. Say you're telling your friend that you just feel sad and you don't know why and blah, 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 this and that. And your friend says things like, come on, think happy thoughts, be positive, you have so much to be grateful for. Whether you, it is your friend telling you this or whether you're trying to tell yourself this in your head to try and negate the sad thoughts or the sad emotions that you're feeling, you are actually shaming yourself, subconsciously shaming yourself about feeling these negative emotions. Instead, think something like, it's perfectly normal to feel negative right now, and I know it may only be temporary, but take a deep breath. Now take it one step at a time, and I will get through this. By saying something like this, that is not forceful. It's actually acknowledging the emotions that you feel as completely valid and okay, and just reminding yourself to take it one step at a time, which is giving yourself a normal, realistic, actionable way to move forward with these emotions that isn't setting unrealistic expectations for your emotional state. If you are going, come on, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, even though you're thinking sad thoughts, you are just forcing yourself to do something that just may not be possible at the time. So allow yourself to feel the emotions, acknowledge the emotions, and provide yourself a realistic way to move forward with those emotions. Number two, spiritual bypassing, which is the tendency to use spiritual ideas and practices to avoid facing your own emotional or mental issues or to avoid the problems, needs, emotional, or mental issues of other people. Now, this is very similar to toxic positivity. However, it is more so focused on using certain spiritual figures and spiritual beliefs in order to bypass and overlook the negative experiences or emotions that others may be facing or you yourself may be facing. One example is you try to talk to someone about how you're feeling sad lately and you don't know why. 
So that person says something like, God has provided so much to be grateful for and God will always provide. All you need to do is continue to pray to him and all will be well. Now, whether the person's intention is good and they are seriously, if they seriously think they're giving you very good spiritual and emotional advice, or whether their intentions are just selfish and they just wanna brush off and not deal with what you're feeling, what you're venting to them about, no matter what their intentions are, this is extremely harmful. It does the same thing as toxic positivity. It simply invalidates whatever we're feeling and ends up making us feel guilty for feeling the way that we feel. It ends up making us feel like something's wrong with us. Like, why am I so ungrateful, you know? like. There's so much to be grateful for and God will provide and this and that. Or maybe you do pray every night. Maybe you pray every morning and night or whatever it is. Maybe you do some spiritual practice every morning and night. But this person is telling you that you need to continue to do that. You need to meditate. You need to pray, whatever it is. But you're already doing that. So now you're thinking, well, I already do that. So now what? Like, what is wrong with me? So you start thinking that something is wrong with you, that you should be more grateful, you should be more positive or whatever. You should be in some type of state that you are currently not and you don't know how to get out of. So again, just like with toxic positivity, you need to just realize that sometimes you're going to feel this way and that's okay. You need to acknowledge the way you're feeling. Let yourself know that it is valid to feel this way and that is only temporary. And then provide yourself a realistic, actionable way to move out of that emotion, whether that's something like journaling, reading, taking some self-care time, drawing, doing some hobby that you enjoy. Third, we have narcissistic spirituality, which is when someone uses spiritual practices and knowledge to place themselves above others. Unfortunately, this is one of the things that I see the most on social media and it sucks. I see a lot of memes and things that come out that may have, again, good intentions, but it's really harmful. And if people are new to their spiritual journey, and they're just discovering themselves, they may not know what to look out for. And I'm sure that's why you're here and it's okay. Um, that's what I'm here teaching you for. But it is very important. This is probably the biggest one I see on social media specifically, but it can also happen a lot in your personal relationships and you may not realize it. My first example is somebody twisting scripture in order to justify their own behavior. So this doesn't have to be specifically biblical scripture. I'm just using this as an example, but it can be in the form of they can take um, some spiritual quote from some spiritual figure. They can take a quote out of a spiritual book of some sort. The way that this showed up for me specifically and I became aware of this is because of a narcissistic, um, mentally abusive relationship that I had for three and a half years. This person was very focused on his own spiritual journey with God, specifically with Christianity. And I so many times felt like something was wrong with me. And one of the reasons I felt like something was wrong with me is because he would actually use biblical scripture against me. And I didn't realize what was happening at the time. I really just thought something was wrong with me. But then it wasn't until later on when, you know, I had already kind of had the light bulb go off where I realized that something was wrong with the relationship. There was some type of mental and emotional abuse going on. And um, that's when I started to recognize that he was using and twisting the real meaning behind the scripture he was telling me. He was actually twisting it to fit his own agenda. And I started to recognize that because I started to research these scriptures on my own and what they actually mean. And whereas you can't always trust everything that you see on the internet, the actual meanings behind these scriptures were so contradictory of what he was actually trying to say by using them that it was just so apparent to me that it was wrong. And he was using it to justify his own narcissistic behavior. This is something that shows up all the time on social media 
and with your personal relationships, just like with mine, and with your family members. And again, people may not realize they're doing it, and that is why it's so important that you stay aware of it. If you feel that somebody's doing something wrong towards you or saying something wrong, and then they try to use scripture or some other spiritual text or quote in order to try and fit their agenda, it is important to do your research. And this goes for everything I say in this video. You can even do your research about everything I'm talking about. I encourage you to, because if you do your own research, you're reinforcing the habit of looking things up and gaining your own knowledge and not just blindly trusting what you see on the internet because that is very dangerous or not blindly trusting what somebody tells you because you love them and because you're close to them. We are all humans. We all make mistakes, we all misunderstand and miscommunicate, so just do your own research. If you're enjoying this video so far, please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and the bell so I can reach so many more people just like you that need to know this type of knowledge. And leave a comment for me down below letting me know what type of toxic spirituality you might have seen or you have experienced in your own life. My second example of narcissistic spirituality is somebody tearing down other people's beliefs or practices because they believe they know best. And I see this type of shaming all the time, again, on social media. And a lot of times they're in the form of jokes. Again, a little bit of a personal tidbit from my own spiritual background. I no longer associate myself with one specific religion or practice because I believe that there's truth in all of them and I love all of them. And I keep my mind open to learning from every single belief out there. With that being said, so I no longer specifically follow Christianity or any structured religion, but I do 100% believe in the existence of Jesus at one point, and I 100% respect that Jesus was a huge spiritual figure that made a profound difference, and I 100% believe in the existence of God and the universe and all of this, right? That's why I have this channel. <laughs> As long as you're finding spiritual enlightenment, I am happy for you, truly. But with all that being said, one day when I was on social media, um, I saw a meme from a spiritual page that I loved, and I love this page. I love the quotes they shared, the content they shared, everything, it was amazing. But one day, they shared this um, tweet that somebody made, and it was only meant to be funny, and I'm sure that they thought it was just lighthearted comedy, and you know, that's fine. But again, it's just important to be aware of the things that make you feel bad energy. And the post said something along the lines of, Why do we look up to Jesus so much? He died with no money and no hoes. LOL. The reason that this is just problematic is because one, this spiritual page I thought was really spreading positive, positivity and enlightenment for everybody, no matter what spiritual path they're on. And the problem with this joke is that even if you may find it funny, the ultimate issue with it for me and the reason I followed that page is because you're shaming a very profound spiritual figure for people. You know, I would never say anything to shame Buddha, anything to shame Jesus, anything to shame Gandhi or any historical spiritual figures, whether you think they're fictional or they're real, whatever it is, I would never shame any of them. And I really felt nothing but bad energy from that post. And so what I want you to learn from that is that if something makes you feel off or you're not sure about how it made you feel, release it. Unfollow that page, whatever you it is you need to do. If somebody's making you feel that way, distance yourself from them. But recognize that shaming others because you think that your spiritual practice is the best is toxic spirituality. Specifically, narcissistic toxic spirituality. Fourth, viewing the ego as an enemy to our spiritual journey is a form of toxic spirituality. It has become widely known as something negative towards the spiritual journey, like it truly is our enemy because the ego is what drives things like wanting money, wanting certain clothes, certain products, and we can lose ourselves entirely in the ego in a lot of ways because we're so focused on our physical existence. Because of this, 
there has been a wide misconception about the ego being something that we have to eradicate every trace of in order to become truly enlightened and spiritual, which is not true. Actually, our ego is necessary as humans. This brings us back to the idea of yin and yang, which is basically the balance between light and dark, feminine and masculine, etc., etc. Everything requires balance. Too much of anything is not good. Too much of your spiritual practice is not healthy and can be unhealthy for you. Too much consumption by the ego is also equally unhealthy, but none is more important than the other. It's all about balance. The reality is that we are here on earth living a physical life in a material world. This physical life and our existence in it is not in itself an evil or negative experience. It's what you choose to do with it. Our ego actually exists in order to ensure that we bring things to fruition in this life. It's ultimately where we get our drive to do things and accomplish things. If I had no sense of ego in myself and just completely consumed myself in my spiritual journey and becoming enlightened and everything and just basically became a living spirit on this earth with no connection to the physical realm that we live in, then I wouldn't be making these videos. I wouldn't have the drive to do what I do to make these videos, to maintain consistency, to do all of these things. I would have no true work ethic in that sense. I would have no sense of wanting to help all of these people through the work that I do, a lot of that drive comes from the ego, but it's because there is a balance, a constant state of balance that I'm going back and forth with between my spiritual self and my egotistical self that allows me to do what I do. If I was too consumed by the ego, I would probably be just focusing on getting money and being selfish and having all the material things. But if I was too focused on the spiritual self, again, I wouldn't be doing any of this in the first place. So it's all about balance. Our ego is important to carry out our purpose and our service that is meant to be carried out in this lifetime. It's not about eradicating the ego. We need the ego. It's about learning how to work with your ego in a healthy way. Lastly, Acting as if every person must do A, B, and C in order to actually be spiritual or enlightened. This is similar to what I mentioned earlier, but every single person's path to fulfillment, peace, happiness, enlightenment is completely different. Again, we're not all robots made the same. We're not meant to be on the same setting or live the same life. We don't have a linear existence while we're here. We are all meant to experience different things, live different things, and therefore find different paths to our ultimate purpose, to our ultimate happiness. Judging somebody else because they don't meditate, they pray, or because they meditate and pray, but they don't use crystals, or because they journal and they pray, but they don't bother to look into the chakras or whatever, whatever it is. Everybody will have a unique formula and a unique combination of spiritual practices and beliefs that make them who they are and form their spiritual path. And that's the key word, their spiritual path, not yours, not mine, it's theirs. And recognizing that and respecting that and also having an open mind to also learn from them is key. Keep your mind and your heart open and do not allow yourself to judge others for what they choose to do. Say they're not even being spiritual at all. It is still not our place to judge them. It's not. It's our place to keep an open mind and an open heart to everybody's experience in this lifetime, even if it's different from your own. So this goes back to something you may see on social media or you may see it in your personal relationships, people shaming you for the spiritual practices you decide to do. Or you may subconsciously find yourself, and it's important to become aware of this, you may subconsciously find yourself judging other people or looking down upon other people because of what they choose to do. So if you see it happening on social media or in your personal relationships, start to recognize it. Or if you see yourself doing it, start to recognize it because this is definitely a form of toxic spirituality. Now to close out this video, we're going to talk about just five short examples of healthy spirituality. Number one, 
having mutual respect for others' spiritual journeys or overall boundaries, needs, and experiences, and understanding that they will be different from your own. Number two, maintaining a channel for healthy communication amongst individuals who have different experiences from each other. Number three, being willing and able to empathize with other people's experiences rather than judging it or shutting it down immediately. Number four, keeping a sense of honesty and openness about the fact that we are all human and no one is perfect. Number five, encouraging everyone to embrace themselves and their own journey, making everyone feel safe. Again, be sure you're leaving a comment down below about the type of talks of spirituality you found most interesting or that you may have experienced yourself. I really want to know what your experience has been through social media, with your family, etc. on your spiritual journey. And be sure you're not forgetting once again to like, subscribe, and hit the bell, please. And you can hop over to the LeBleu Lotus Facebook community where we talk more about astrology, spirituality, and using those for self-transformation. If you're into more personal content of mine, you can head over to my Instagram, at Marissa LeBleu, where I have more astrological, spiritual, and personal content. Until the next video comes out, be sure you watch these videos right here. I appreciate you so, so much for being here. And until next time... Adiós.